where are you? So I'm in, so we building, we share a, a government building with uh, two other organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Art Museum and Archives. And then also um, ArtServe, which is an art incubator space. Uh, it's been around mm -hmm. about four South Florida. And so um, we have some of these cool spaces like this. I yeah, but some of these cool spaces that are sort of like um, creative hubs where people can, you know, sit in and, and do what they need to do, take phone calls, et cetera, do this. Um, so, okay. so my office is not decorated yet. So I was like, they probably don't want to stare at a blank wall. <laughs> like how boring that. Um, right. Let me just take it in this cute space. So that's well, what. If, if, if it makes you feel better, it's like my office is kind of the same. Like, you know, I haven't really done much to decorate my office. So I literally just like put this up, like this flag up with some genders and stuff, you know, just to kind of like add a background because it's normally just right. really white. And... Right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> well, it's all the pride one. So, you know, at least your decoration is good. Right. The theme of the month so <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly it's uh, it's weird to say but i actually have had like the flag kind of stuffed in my draw drawer for like months now um, <laughs> yeah i was just like so i'm finally glad i can like display because i've got some other stuff in here too but it was the first time i'm really excited just because it's my first ever like actual office so it's like oh i can mm. like do stuff and there's like it's weird to say but there's kind of this weird sense of imposter syndrome where it's like the way that it was kind of set up i'm like it doesn't really feel like it's really my office so i'm waiting for somebody to like come in and be like hey get out of my office and you know <laughs> yeah. so appreciate that thank you <laughs> yeah right well uh so i can see we got some oh sorry sorry go ahead where exactly are you located? Uh, so I'm in Cologne, Germany, and um, I'm doing my PhD here at the German Sports University in Cologne. So I'm, I'm located at uh, one of the buildings here. So Fantastic. So I haven't necessarily been on Instagram Live stuff in a long time, so I know I'm yours. Do I click anything? To... Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope, you should be all set. Yeah. So and we're actually so we're actually already broadcasting. So um, I can see that we've got a, like a handful of people that have already joined and are are uh, watching our little chat. So which is good. Um, so what I'll do is I'll introduce you real quick, just so everybody who uh, uh, is watching knows who you are. Um, so everybody, this is Terry. He is the executive director for the World AIDS Museum and Education Center in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Correct. Nope, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Okay, really cool, awesome. Um, yeah, so thanks for joining me. I mean, this is really cool to be able to chat with you. And uh, uh, somebody just said hello from Bermuda, so we are, uh, you know, we got some from the Caribbean, which is That's super amazing. cool. That's amazing. Hey, Bermuda, never <laughs> been. Yeah, I've never been either. I've actually never like been into any of the islands, um, you know, kind of in that whole area, but I really want to go. Uh, so, you know, hopefully if, you know, I can, you know, get enough money after my PhD and get a plane ticket to go all the way to, uh, from Germany all the way to, you know, the Caribbean, that would be pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. And we have uh, somebody from New Jersey as well, so, you know. Jersey. Well, I only know a few people from New Jersey, so it's it's one of, one of three or four. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so by the way, happy birthday, because apparently you've, you've just had your birthday. No, it's or coming your... up. Oh, it's coming up. So, our birthday celebrations last night, so. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, you're like me. It's like, I don't have just a, um, I don't have just a, like, a birthday. It's like, I have to have a whole week of just celebrations and stuff Absolutely. like that. Absolutely. Listen, I get we all get one day for it to be us, but I'm like, mm, I'm going to sell. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, no. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, my favorite, so my birthday is always the week of Thanksgiving, so it's like, for my birthday, it's always like I get turkey and like a whole feast and all this stuff, and I'm like, oh, it's just for me. and All for you. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> it's funny. So my birthday is Father's Day, usually Pride Weekend, 
Juneteenth. So, wow. yeah, so I have to do a lot of celebrating, a lot <laughs> of activities for that week. <laughs> so it's exhausting, but I love it. I also I get to share my my birthday with such an important um, national holiday like Juneteenth. So. Oh yeah. Now, do you do anything special, um, you know, to celebrate Juneteenth in, in conjunction with your birthday? Um, I have in the past. Um, we are I'm not doing anything this year um, except for my birthday party on my actual birthday. So mm -hmm. I'm excited for that for um, and celebrate Juneteenth. However, um, we're not doing anything organized this year. Next year. Um, we probably will. Again, I just joined the organization, so yeah, there's yeah. happening already. So <laughs> at least take maybe just that weekend off. <laughs> right, right. You know, you got to kind of let things, you know, settle in first before you get crazy, so. Right. And Pride uh, for Wilton Manors here in South Florida is the day before my birthday, so there's oh, no wow. on that day. So, um to at least have a little day there <laughs> yeah and i mean i it's like i feel like wilton manors like will have a legendary pride like that's just gonna be crazy always <laughs> thousands of people every single bar and is on the drive they do think great time so oh, man that's that's gonna be so much fun i'm actually really jealous you know it's like because it's just all that crazy fun gay florida stuff that you can have that, <laughs> that just makes it amazing well, I think with everything going on with, um, you know, our governor, legislative, and everything, mm -hmm. going on for, for us to band together and and continue to and you know spread the message and the word and get folks inclusive of of um, taking pride in everything. So we're we're excited this year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's very important. You know, it's now more than ever that we need these kind of events and celebrations and, and just things that are going on just to, you know, do what we can to, to, to resist, right? And to, to, to show that, hey, you can't just put us back in the closet. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, with, with all of the threatening of our rights and our uh, liberal, civil, civil liberties being um, challenged, you know, we have to continue to do things like this. Right, right. And tell me a little bit more about your role with the World AIDS Museum. I mean, that's you said you just joined the organization and everything like that. So how did all that come about? And, and, and yeah. Absolutely. So the World AIDS Museum, uh, we were, we're, we'll celebrate our 10th anniversary in, in 2024. Um, it started from a support group um, that was specifically for um, HIV positive men to, um, you know, support each other and, and kind of navigate that space so forth. Um, so they were um, doing things together way back in sort of 2011, 2012, and they decided, well, we need to have a bigger space. We need to kind of take this on the road, if you will. Mm -hmm. And that they were able to create the they have uh, developed fund a profit, etc. So what I love is that the founders are still involved yeah. in that and also still supporting the museum. Um, in fact, a couple of in my office for a meeting last week. And so it's great to still have that and have that support from founding members of the organization. And, and the mission station is really to preserve the history of HIV and AIDS through, and also provide conversation that will um, dispel stigma around HIV and AIDS. And we do that by um, programs, we do it by expression um, and different cultural things. Um, so I am so be um, at the organization now, um, volunteer in the peer educator program that we have um, for the past year before joining the organization. And uh, prior to this, I was at a, another nonprofit in town. I did mental health services to the community and I was very, very connected to uh, the World AIDS Museum before um, here officially. So wow. uh, a little bit about our organization and to uh, take the helm, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. And that's really amazing, too, because it shows how passionate everybody that works for it is, you know, and, and how much it's like really just a, um, you know, a project of the heart and just a project of like, here's, you know, the real experiences that we have and here's how we can channel this into something positive, which I Absolutely. think is really uh, amazing. Absolutely. I think a lot of folks 
we, we don't, in our society, we don't have the conversation around HIV and AIDS any longer. Um, it's not prevalent. You know, we sort of joked, if you will, and said we talked more about COVID and had more around COVID than we did um, an epidemic that has been going on for, you know, so, so many years. And so um, we are responsible. My organization is responsible for maintaining those continuing to um, spread the message and, and talk about prevention and sexual health and wellness and things of that nature. So I'm excited to finally affiliate um, in an organization that can do that. Yeah, that's really exciting. And, and I really like, um, you know, as you said, it's really important to keep the conversation going. I had uh, recently at the, at, the, at the German Sports University, I was invited to do uh, participate on a workshop panel for some PE students, and it was about LGBT diversity in sports and all this stuff like that. And the whole idea was, was to talk about, okay, you know, for PE teachers, you know, and kids that are coming up and youth and, and you know, um, how do you deal with, you know, kids that are questioning themselves and, you know, kind of going through that whole process, right? And, and one of the things that I talked about really was in my own experience growing up, um, there's a guy named Michael Meliff who was an HIV positive swimmer and at the 1990 Gay Games he became the first person who was HIV positive to set a world record in a sport and I you know had to share like how inspirational that is for me like you know I only learned that story a few years ago but to think about that and, and to think about how at that time there was only one treatment there was only you know one um you know little glimmer of hope but for at that time it was still kind of a death sentence you know so so the fact that it was somebody that not only wasn't you know sitting in a hospital bed just wasting away it was somebody who was able to continue swimming and set a world record which you know was super powerful and that's the kind of messaging that you know I think has a really big impact and and the things that people need to hear and see. Absolutely. You know, over the years, we have had um, a handful of folks that have come out as, you know, being HIV positive, whether LGBTQ or not LGBTQ. I think one of the biggest ones, you know, in our history is obviously Magic Johnson, mm -hmm. right? right. Anus, who, um, in the old of that nature, too. So I think yeah. the more that we have people... Uh, you know, sort of step up and step out awareness, especially if they've got those large platforms. That's the way that we will continue the importance of these conversations. Um, you know, HIV and AIDS is not the doom and gloom that it be anymore. Right. If to be an AIDS here, there'd be no prep, right? You know, lots of are, are on prep and talking about prep and prep is like the, all the the rave you know in the last several years um, with respects to um, sexual health and medications. Well, we have to still honor and preserve talk about how we got to that point. Right. Um, because there's a medication called prep doesn't mean that you still you stop the conversations, right? right. Um, I again I, I can't stress to um, how excited I am to. And be a part of it in official capacity, even though over the years I've always kind of had these kind of, I mean, heck, I wrote a book and that talked about it. No, it was, it's just in my nature, in my DNA, have conversations and bring awareness to this sort of sensitive subject matter. Yeah, and I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, you got to keep the conversation going because there's still a lot of stigma out there. I mean, you know, even to this day, you know, um, like gay men are discriminated against when trying to donate blood or donate organs to say, oh, you can only donate if you've been celibate for so many months because of this, you know, archaic, antique fear of, of HIV when it's like, no it's 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 you know everybody has an equal chance of contracting and, and, and if you're not taking proper precautions like you know uh, prep or safe sex or anything like that it's it's still out there agreed agreed and I think the you know what focuses of our museum is not only to maintain our space in the LGBTQ uh, arena but it's real also getting outside it into on LGBTQ spaces so we have educational programs that um, are in the school district here in Broward County um, in South Florida, but we're, at, you know, under my new leadership, we are going to be taking a lot of those educational programs into other school districts um, mm -hmm. in Florida, but then also trying to connect with folks that are um, in states and in different counties, because those are the folks that, that need to, those are the folks that mm -hmm. necessarily have resources readily available to them um, 
all more rural type towns. You're in a place like ours, you're in a place like San Francisco, Chicago. We're we we those epicenters, right? So yeah. there's there's nonprofits, there's prevention spaces that are constantly um uh, bringing and talking about the messaging. We things need to get into those more rural um, um, cities and counties and across the country. So that's really our focus is to what we kind of like to say is to go national, then go in. Like we can't have a name like the World AIDS Museum. He <laughs> sort of stuck in South Florida. So we're so excited to be doing it. Uh, I in an early week with uh, healthcare um, in so we're, we're going to be looking to partnering, you know, um, uh, across the pond. And so that's really one of the things we're excited about. And that's how you Right. And that's what's so amazing. I mean, like you said, it's it's the World AIDS Museum. But, you know, you first you establish the foundation and then you, you grow and you expand and you let the message, you know, get carried to everywhere it's going. And, you know, it's like you said, AIDS is not something that's specific to one area there's there's countries and continents that are still facing major issues with it you know and and stuff like that and those are the countries and the places that need this education and this discussion and these things like that and then being able to take what we learn from there and then you know be able to memorialize it in the aids museum and memorialize it in the ways that we've been able to do so you know as a, as a way to to remember the people that you know have been affected by it but also to you know continue that discussion moving forward Absolutely. I could not agree with you more. It's so incredibly important, um, I think, in, in non-LGBTQ space, but also in communities of color. Um, mm -hmm. um, um, I've ha had the opportunity over the last weeks to have conversations with heterosexual men and women, and so they uh, they were shocked that they didn't even think about having HIV in their normal medical checkups with their practitioners and so forth and so it's been so eye-opening to outside mm -hmm. space and, and sort of pushing these these dialogues um around sexual health and 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 yeah. and it's that that excites me right because mm -hmm. that's deepen and strengthen the conversation um yeah. it, it's sort of like the lgbtq space like, or, or community we we right a lot of us have lived it you know since mm -hmm. the 80s work in prevention and has been around these for such a long time it's those that don't always hear it or have access to it or have the resources to get into these spaces to hear these messages so I cannot stress enough that i'm so excited about the work that uh, we are currently the things that we have coming up yeah and that's fantastic i mean you know uh i know we've uh, just recently connected on social media but you know, this past week, it seems like you've been, you know, being honored and celebrated like every day for something for something <laughs> new with the work that you're doing. Like, that's so cool. And it shows, you know, how much how much you're really passionate about this stuff. Can you tell me a little bit about some of these things that you've been uh, been honored for? Sure. Um, I tell folks I joke and tell folks all the time. I eh, don't believe the hype. It, it's just <laughs> you know, it's, it's not work if you enjoy what you're doing, passionate about what you are doing. And if you hardly believe in the impacting someone's life, um, then it it's, doesn't seem like work. Um, yeah, we did the things this week. So um, National Diversity with a um, leadership award um, for their 2022 LGBT plus community summit that was held in Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Um, so thank you once again to them. Um, it was a, a wonderful honor. The event was incredible. Uh, the panel that had that morning um, were just absolutely impactful important. and and a lot of the folks in the room um, were non LGBT it was wonderful to to see that and diverse um, so I was excited about that one and to be um, a part of it um, our organization the World AIDS Museum also had an opportunity to present so I'm so proud of our educational director and his work at that he sparked around the important did um, I was like proud Papa and granted I've only been you know Papa for for you know two months as of tomorrow in fact um, but I was there like proud Papa as he um, really spoke and personalized um, the presentation um, group so we we had that this week and then that night 
Video Fort Lauderdale um, gave us a, 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 a Pride Month in the Fort Lauderdale, and so they named three nonprofit um, longstanding organizations um, that um, are doing work in our. So the World AIDS Museum was on capacity, and so uh, to be with the city and all uh, folks uh, to receive that honor. So yes, and then we just um, were. Um, Contacted because we're also having a diversity and inclusive inclusion award um, uh, next Wednesday on June fifteenth here in Fort Lauderdale um, as a community advocate. We're excited to be at that. This event, as it's been described to me, is like Hoover and Shakers, you know, in, yeah. in Lauderdale and all the folks that are incredible work in their um, respective industries. So we were mm -hmm. honored to be asked to be a part. Of as well, so it's a busy month. <laughs> yeah. It is definitely month. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 a great month. I mean this is this is all the good stuff, you know, that that you know is all coming together. So and that's really exciting. And we're with Compete Sports Diversity, we're super excited that we can connect with you as well because you know, me personally, I you know, my background is in exercise in, in sports science, and, you know, I'm studying at the, you know, largest uh, sports university in Europe, you know, and I've always maintained in my own personal life how the effects of sports and exercise can have such a positive and healthy impact on, on people, especially LGBT people, I think, you know, and when you mentioned, you talked about Greg Luganis, you know, and he competed at the Olympics, you know, and, and he had the, the whole smack his head on the diving board thing like that, but if you've ever read his novel, his novel Breaking the Surface, and he talks about that whole period of his life, and he talks about, you know, the struggles of being in a toxic relationship, and, and then, you know, being diagnosed with HIV, and then, uh, you know, still doing all this stuff, and he credits, you know, that, that persistence of training and, 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 you know, maintaining physical fitness and training for the Olympics. And he credits a lot of that for helping them, you know, to get through it during that period and help them to, to still, I mean, you know, survive basically to, to be able to, to make it. So for me, it's always been so important that what we're doing with, with, sports diversity is, is, is really well connected, I think, to your work as well, because, you know, I've got a lot of friends and I got a lot of people with HIV that are, that are athletes and, and they're, you know, training hard and competing on, and on the same level and even better than I am. And, you know, it's, it's really been a good thing to help them live with, with, live with HIV and be able to, 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 you know, make it so that they can, you know, still be as strong. Absolutely. I could not agree with you more. I, you know, I've also been an entire and um, just recently went through knee replacement so I can get back to athletic uh, prowess, if you will. <laughs> I cannot, you know, stress enough with people around me and personally, professionally, how incredibly important physical fitness is because it not only, you know, takes care of your body, but it takes care of your mental. And as we've seen, you know, a lot of conversations has been um, sparked in the last mental health and mentality. and so um, from you know lots of athletes and professionals and things of that nature so the the more in my opinion the more that we you know take on it in not only our health but our wellness mm -hmm. they do work in tandem with it, um, the longer like uh, we will be able to live longer, right um, so I, I I definitely um, know the sports space very well I was so excited when um, I met Eric uh, to connect with uh, sports and just to have the conversation around the um, importance of diversity and inclusivity for different spaces. Uh, yeah. I don't, we think about it as a society, right, about workspace and about having diversity in workspace. We talked about that a lot, but we haven't talked about diversity in. Uh, Right, we have not about it in the sports world. We have not talked about it in music and arts and ballet. You know, the the stage, the theater. That's so incredibly important to be a part of the conversation around DNI. So, anytime about diversity and inclusivity, I am all for. It. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, it's it's you know, and and it's it's really interesting too because with sports, the diversity, equity, and inclusive message really. I don't want to say it changes, but it, it, it adapts to, like, the different kinds of sports, you know? And there's so many conversations to be held. I mean, you know, you mentioned Magic Johnson, you know, he was, like, 
probably the most famous basketball player that was playing at the time when he was diagnosed, you know? And, and so he was very crucial in, in building that conversation to say, hey, you know, this can affect straight people and it can affect even the top level athletes. And, 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 and that was a huge, um, you know, discussion. And then, you know, you talk about like Olympic sports and different types of professional sports and, and stuff like that. Cause it's, when we talk about diversity inclusive, you know, it's people of color and it's, you know, different gender identities and, and, and people with HIV and, you know, how do they, how do they, you know, contend with all that in different kinds of sports and it, the conversation quickly gets super complicated and crazy and, 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 and a lot of passionate people about it. That's for sure. <laughs> you know, but it's, 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 there's so much there. And then, yeah, like you mentioned, you, there's arts and there's, um, you know, different elements of culture. And this is really where we need to be having these conversations. Absolutely. Representation is incredibly important across the board, not just in a uh, base here or a space over there, you know, it needs to be in all industries, in all um, um, walks of life, right? Like everything we do needs to have representation. From if it's more about thinking about the next generation and what being, what are we teaching them? Um, uh, our actions, how we're setting forth laws and and things like we have to think about that, in my opinion, right? Um, Folks need to tell people that the people that are providing, you know, in arts and culture. So um, I love the fact sports diversity um, is that's around and that's working with working with the NFL. That's working with all of these professional sport, sporting or as again, we get into get us able to have these conversations, spark these impactful conversations. Because if we don't. Most people are not going to do themselves and because it's, it's, it's a sense of rocking the boat. It's also challenging folks' ways of thinking that in over the years, right? So we to to push the envelope with respect to that. Right. And I mean, with these professional sports organizations like the NFL and MLB and, and NHL and NBA and all these you know, major organizations, they're the ones that people are looking up to for guidance. I mean, when, when, when you know, uh, for example, the whole transgender athlete debate, right? You know, when, when people are trying to understand, you know, what do we do? How do we handle this? Well, you know, they're looking for these like, top level organizations to be the ones that say, hey, this is what we can do. Um, you know, and, and, and to some extent, you can kind of see that with the NCAA, with the Olympic Committee and stuff like that. But, you know, those are the organizations that, you know, they have the funding, they have the, the, the platform, they have the experience to say, hey, you, we can have a major impact, a major influence on how society views this level of representation. And how do we, you know, how do we go forward in this in this discussion? Absolutely agree. That's that's you hit the nail on the head like that. They really and why it's so incredibly important. And I think, you know, we don't always, we do, we tend to like to go with the status quo, right? We don't like pushing the envelope or rocking the boat and things of that nature. So we need folks with those large platforms to be taking a stand, to be speaking out in mm -hmm. their platform for the greater good. One of my favorite quotes of all time is with great responsibility, right? Mm -hmm. uh, folks that have that privilege in our society, you have to know that you have the responsibility to, right. to use your support. Right, and that's that's super important, you know, it's, it's to remind ourselves, like, you know, people with privilege, like, use that privilege to help the people that don't have that benefit, you know, and use that to elevate those platforms and those people to say, hey, you know, we need to have these conversations and discussions. And the best way we can do that is to learn from, Absolutely. you know, from these communities, you know, learn from the communities that you're saying, hey, this is a problem, you know, help us fix it. And if we don't learn from them, how do we know what to fix, you know, and then we can take that message from them and then use it to, you know, further it and pass it along and say, hey, this is a problem. And here's how we are. Here's how we can, you know, here's what we can do about it. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree. I yeah. agree. You mentioned uh, you are uh, able to get back into your own sport here soon. What? What? Tell me about that. What's your sport? So I've played many sports over the years. So I was an NCAA athlete. I ran track and field, um, gosh, for a lot longer than I care to remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was actually... 
I know. Um, and then I also played um, collegiate volleyball. Um, and and um, now I, I'm back to playing some tennis. Uh, I've been a competitive tennis player for a long time as well. And um, I've competed in the gay games three times mm -hmm. over the years, once in volleyball and two in tennis. And nice. uh, love, love, love. I, I'm just I'm a competitive person by nature. I do not like to lose at any <laughs> Personally, professionally, I just over the years and say that I hate or win. So um, it, it just it's nice to have something that few, you know, and and being competitive. So um, those, those are my sports, and we're hoping that I'll be able to get back to play all in the fall. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I need this need a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and let's let's you know not let's not injure the knee again and mess it all up on the first day. You know that, right? Exactly. Yeah. The, the physical therapists were completely, you know, sort of freaking. Oh my gosh, you have to be careful. You are so young to have this type of surgery, so you can't hardcore like you're accustomed. <laughs> like, let me just get back there. You know? <laughs> yeah. So so no crazy on the court antics, you know, it's, it's no 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 big jumps and ball, you know, spikes <laughs> and you know, crazy. I'll take my time, but at least tennis ball I get to hit something, you know. Right. <laughs> the good thing is you get to hit it with your arm, right? So if you knock out your elbow then that's that's okay, you know, because it's not at least it's not your knee. Right. Your your PT will not be bad, you know, for that. Right. <laughs> Yeah. No, I, it's funny too. I get really competitive. I mean, I mean, I, I get into the swimming pool and I'm like, it doesn't matter who's swimming. I'm like, I need to try and be faster than the person that's next to me. And if, you know, they're up here and I'm kind of back and I have to like try to catch up to them for no reason whatsoever. I'm just, <laughs> I have to do it. <laughs> I love <laughs> yeah, what um which gay games did you compete at? Oh gosh. So my very first one was two thousand six Chicago. Um got a bronze medal. Like <laughs> very nice, very nice. <laughs> Chicago, and then I did Cleveland, I played mm -hmm. and then the most recent one in uh, so four years. Oh, it's crazy that it's been four years. But, yeah. Um, my brother and I were and I'll try in this, my brother and I were one. Yeah, in the world in doubles. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> yeah, I've done three. Nice. Yeah, my, my first one was in 2010, which was here in Cologne, actually. And yeah. that was, it's really neat because I get to tell people, I'm like, I'm studying at the same university that I competed at, you know, okay. for the gay games. And then I, I talk to students here and they're all like, what? What? I had, holy crap, that's so amazing. I had no idea. And then it's like, you could just see their yeah. you know, brain explode when they realize, like, I'm like, you know how big this thing is? Like, it's not just right. a little, you know, weekend sports event. It's a whole, right. it's a whole to do. Um, but yeah, I was in Cleveland as well. And I was also in Paris. So. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah. I, I, I really want them to, um, I, I want somewhere fascinating, somewhere cool, some sort of waiting and waiting. They, okay. That, into and uh, so I'm waiting for that day. At least again, yeah. I have heal and right. Right. Yeah, I'm, I, it's funny you say that because then it's like, okay, I mean, I, I got to wrap on Cleveland a little bit. Cleveland was an amazing event. Yeah, but it was still like you know, and I told people I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be in Cleveland, and everybody was like, Cleveland, really? <laughs> Doing Cleveland, <laughs> Cleveland, like you're like, you see. And it's a fun city, you know. You, yeah. There's so many things there, but um, yeah, Cleveland. Like, wait, what are we doing in Cleveland? Right. <laughs> Don't knock on Cleveland. I had a great. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, yeah, Cleveland. Like, I think you know, there's a self awareness with Cleveland. Like, they knew that it was going to be a hard sell, you know. So they were the ones that had to be like, okay, come on, y'all, it's it's going to be fine, and yep. and stuff, and. And I love to use that as an example of like the power of, of sports diversity, right? Like the power of everything we're doing, because it's like, you know, Cleveland is conserv traditionally conservative and, you know, they had a lot of going against them basically when organizing the thing. And it's like, you know, the gay games was built around going to places like that and saying, hey, look, gay people, LGBTQ people can compete here and, and be athletes and be, you know, on the same level as everybody else. And here's how we're doing it. And, um, 
You know, and I tell people, I was like, yeah, you know, they had to convince the LGBT community about Cleveland, and then they had to convince Cleveland about the LGBT community. And I feel like they were successful at both. I agree. There's a lot that goes into, you know, for, for those that don't know, there's a lot that goes into running a tournament, right, on the weekend. But doing mm. something of that magnet, not only for the United States, but for the world, that's mm. a an undertaker. And yeah. we've got to do a more conservative space or location. There's a lot of, you know, holding, there's a lot of armed, there's a lot of convincing that needs to there's a lot of respect and acceptance that we're seeing. And again, it's pushing that needle. It's making, you know, normal, if you will. And so that's one of the reasons why I will always love and support um, the gay games is because that's one of the reasons that that's one of the things that it does. Yeah, same here. And um, I remember one of my favorite memories of Cleveland was um, we were going to the aquarium and it was me and a friend and we were walking and we, we you know, uh, kind of just, you know, there was this random guy that was just walking and he saw the, like, the, the badges around our decks. And he was talking about how, um, you know, he talks to us and say, hey, you know, what's your sport? How are you enjoying it? Blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, I mentioned I was in swimming. And in swimming, the gay games every year, plus the International Gay Lesbian Aquatics Championships, host this event called the Pink Flamingo. And the best way to describe okay. it is basically synchronized swimming combined with a drag show. And it's like a blast. And it's, it's one of the only events in the gay games that they actually charge money for tickets for because it gets so popular that they can't they can't you know they have to regulate how many people get let into the venue and right. it's such a fun uh, fun event and so when i when we uh, encountered this guy and we were talking about it he was talking i mean this is like straight laced you know basically is you know probably like you know conservatives as they, as they come i mean i didn't know him that well of course but but he was talking about how excited he was to go to the pink flamingo and he was all like laughing about the thought of drag queens in a swimming pool and, you know stuff like that and it was just like they're like holy crap this really is having an impact and this is really having an effect exactly it's really sort of shifting mindsets and you know tra more traditional behavior right there are differences out there there are people that don't always look like you or don't always have the same mindset or don't always have the same sort of more conservative approach to life it doesn't mean that one is right over the other but you still need to have respect and understand that that's a human being. It's, it's not about gay or straight or black or brown anything like that like, that's a human being at the end of the day being deserves respect regardless of right is regardless of color and their race and all these things none of that matters at the end of the day right yeah. We're, we need to be treated the same amount of respect as mm -hmm. as you are right yeah. uh, I absolutely love it. And I'm excited that we continue after all these years because the gay game been out for a very long time. Um, mm -hmm. I, I randomly, oh, I'm going to the like, what? What is that? Like, yeah. <laughs> Percy, right? So, oh, yeah. Always have it. Always have it. Oh, yeah. You know, and it's fun, too, when I talk to people and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I said, I, um, oh, somebody just comment there saying, yeah, that's exactly what it is, um, Terry. So, you know, preach, 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 girl, preach, you know. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, I talked to a lot of the, the people here because, you know, the university, uh, you know, is a, it's like everywhere else, it's mostly straight, you know, and, and a lot of people that are not aware of the gay games or events like that exist. And so when I talk to them about this and I share it and they're like, you know, they're, wow, that's so amazing. That's so cool cool and they you know they want to know more and then you know the usual questions come up like do you have to be gay to join i'm like no they don't you know they're not checking your gay cards or anything like that like you can join and Absolutely. um i had a i had a conversation around that as well which was uh really interesting about social identity right because somebody said hey well isn't that discriminatory in a way to say oh you know why do it have to be a gay games and it's like it's not exclusive a, it's not exclusive but B, it's also like we want to connect with people that we can identify with. You know, we want to connect with people that we have some kind of connection with in this regard. So whether it's, you know, people who are LGBT or people who, you know, are from from a same culture or something like that. You know, we are naturally drawn to people. 
you know, I'm, I'm drawn to swimmers. I'm, you know, identify with swimmers. So I'm going to go hang out with swimmers. Like, you know, and that's, that's exactly what it is. And that's how we, um, you know, we develop these social groups and develop these, you know, um, support networks in a lot of ways as well. And, and it really matters in, in any regard, you know, whether it's sports or, you know, uh, dealing with HIV and AIDS or, you know, different um, communities, whether it's your physical community or your social community. Like, this is how people connect. And this is why it's so important that events like this exist just you know obviously for the support and representation but for that connection as well right it's also creating spaces right i mean there are a lot of so i always look at it in these and talk to friends about this right like there are more bars that cater to um heterosexual folks right so a lot of lgbt communities won't go to those right there's a lot of obviously the the heterosexual communities won't go to the lgbtq you know spaces or whatever so it's it's you we need this right it doesn't matter what you, you know your race is your ethnicity your your sexual orientation you still have to have a safe space to go become go fellowship to meet people etc and and that's what the, the gay game does the olympics and professional sports and have not always created that safe mm -hmm. they can be authentically themselves so right. what do we created it for ourselves right mm -hmm. you know over the years, you know, don't always ask, you know, knock the door down yourself and go in and create your own. I think that's exactly, you know, athletes of that our LGBTQ has done with these different sporting organizations across the country and, and, and um, in, different, in different spaces, right? We just said, okay, it's enough our own. Some have taken off. You know, I also belong um, for many, many years at Gay Volleyball Association. You know, there's tournaments all over the country, almost every single day. Have our own nationals, you know, all that stuff. And it's now over the years, it's turned into a lot of heterosexual men and women being in the, at nationals because it's just sport. It's about bringing together that are passionate about that particular sport. It's nothing to do with the sexual, action, right? I I look at change over the because it's creating space for everybody to have being a common goal and it and that's winning at the sport, right? right, right. Of you know what your other um, demographics are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, fabulous. And um, I just realized I think we actually gone a little uh, longer than than I uh, originally planned for, but it's great. I mean, it's a fan fabulous discussion, and I, I'm loving it. So. Um, you say, I can go on forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You and me both, like, you know, when I when I did that panel discussion with the PE students, I had to tell the moderator, I was like, make sure you're looking at your watch because I'm just going to blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, it's, it, halfway through, she was like, okay, you got you to gotta stop. We got to, you know, we got to end it uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah. It's, and I really thank you for joining us. Um, can you tell us about how we can find the World AIDS Museum and find, you know, the work that you're doing to be able to, to learn more about it? Absolutely. So we are on almost every social media platform, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, just type in World A Museum um, and we come up. Uh, we are located in um, Fort Lauderdale. Um, again, we share space organization Art Serve and then Stonewall National um, 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 uh, Museum and, and Archive. Um, so we love the space. It's a beautiful building. Um, we're so, so um, appreciative of all the work that's gone into our gap all, all that we have. So um, check out our website, worldaids.org. Um, I'm super easy to find on social media. Just type in my Terry Dyer um, and you can connect me up as well. Um, we're also on LinkedIn, which is very new for us. And I'm personally excited about it. It's a wonderful way for us to connect with other music on a national level and uh, a business perspective, connect with those uh, professionals in that space. So um, you can find us on LinkedIn as well. Yeah, I didn't realize you're on LinkedIn, so I'm gonna go on there like as soon as we're done. And <laughs> absolutely fabulous, wonderful. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. And um, yeah, I mean, if if uh, if uh, we're also, I mean, if if anybody's been on Compete's social media and stuff, you've seen that we've tagged, you know, World AIDS Museum and, and Terry on everything like that. So if all those fellows, you can find the information there as well. Um, yeah, thanks again for for joining us and. If you're all right, I think I'm going to uh, maybe take our interview and see if I can turn it into a, a blog article as well so that we can Love. continue Love getting the message out there.
We'll do the same. Thank you. And thank you so much for the invitation. Again, anytime we can have conversations like this, I, we are absolutely willing to participate. I, I might take you up on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that wonderful. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So, yeah, well, have a nice, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll look forward to chatting again soon. All right. Sounds good. All right. Bye, everyone. All right.